Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to cover expected utility transformations. So in one of our very first lessons, when we first looked at mixed strategies, we talked about this game of matching pennies, which I am labeling matching pennies number one. And we found that the equilibrium for this game is in mixed strategies, and it calls for both players to mix with probability one half uh, along both of their strategies. So player one mixes with heads one half, tails one half, player two does the same. Now let's look at this other game, which I'm calling Matching Pennies number 2. You'll notice that all I've done here is multiplied player 1's payoffs by 2. So all of the 1's became 2's, and all of the negative 1's became negative 2's. And if you want to do a little bit of extra practice right now, you could pause the game and solve for the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium of Matching Pennies 2, but you would quickly find out that it's actually going to be the same equilibrium, where player 1 mixes with probability 1 half between both of his strategies, and player 2 does likewise, going heads half the time and tails half the time. And in this game, which I'm calling Matching Pennies 3, I've just taken what we saw in Matching Pennies 2 and added 1 to player 2's payoffs. So all of the negative 1's became 0 for her, that's a here and here, and all of the positive 1's became 2's for player 2. If you want to pause the game and get a little bit of extra work in here to solve for this game's mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, you could, but I'm guessing you can already figure out what the mixed strategy equilibrium is for this game just based off of what I've already said about the last two. It is, in fact, for both players to mix with probability one half uh, along both of their strategies in the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. So you may be wondering what the heck is going on here, if there's some sort of pattern here, and in fact, there is. So here's a rule about expected utility transformations. We can take any linear transformation of the form m times the expected utility of an outcome and add b. And these weighted utilities, these linear transformations of the utilities, will represent the same preferences over outcomes and lotteries as long as your m is greater than 0. So I have put this in this form of somewhat mx plus b, because you're probably familiar with your first algebra class that this is essentially this, uh, the equation for a line with slope m and intercept b. So that's basically all we're, do all we're doing is we're taking some sort of line mx plus b, and we're just replacing that x with this expected utility x, and we're just also making sure that the slope is positive, so m is greater than zero. And, and like I said, essentially what we're doing here is transforming each player's expected utilities, uh, expected utilities with a function, and as long as we do that, the game will remain the same, or all of the pure strategy Nash equilibrium will remain the same, and all of the mixing probabilities in a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium will be the same. And another important thing to note, as we saw between uh, matching pennies one and matching pennies three, is that we don't even have to select the same transformation for both players. We can give player one one transformation and player two a different transformation, and all of this works out as long as the transformation is of the form mx plus b, where m is a positive number. Um, so you might be wondering why that works. Well, suppose you preferred lottery x to y, then the expected utility of x is going to be greater than the expected utility of y. So we're just assuming that x is better than y, and so uh, as a consequence of that, we know that the expected utility of x has to be greater than the expected utility of y. And I'm allowing for these things to be lotteries as well, but that's going to be a little bit more complicated if we looked at that and we broke down each piece of the lottery. So instead, we're just going to be looking at uh, outcomes here, because that's going to be a little bit easier to work with. But of course, all of this works with, with lotteries that are not degenerate lotteries, um, and everything will be fine with that as well. So um, if this transformation works, then it must be the case that this transformation m times the expected utility of x plus b is greater than m times the expected utility of y plus b. So the way we can see that this is actually going to pan out correctly is by manipulating this equation. So we can, or sorry, manipulating this inequality. We can begin by subtracting b from both sides, which just leaves us with m times the expected utility of x plus m times the expected utility of y. And then you can divide m off of both sides, and that leaves you with just the expected utility of x is greater than the expected utility of y. So this transformation holds as long as this is true. And fortunately, given our assumption here that you prefer lottery x to lottery y, then there you go. X is greater than y, or the expected utility of x is greater than the expected utility of y. So that just holds very readily like that. Now, the reason that you can't do it with something like m equals 0 is because if you take these same assumptions, so you prefer lottery x to lottery y, so the expected utility of lottery x is going to be greater than the expected utility of lottery y, that transformation, uh, if that transformation works, then it must be the case that 0 times the expected utility of x plus b is greater than 0 times the expected utility of y plus b. 
but that's going to be a problem because you can see that as soon as we subtract off the b's from both sides, if you multiply 0 times the expected utility of x and 0 times the expected utility of y, you end up with a, an expression that says 0 is greater than 0, which is absolutely not true. So essentially when you take some sort of uh, linear transformation like this where you just make everything, uh, you make m equals to zero, what that's going to do is it's going to make the utility of every single outcome uh, whatever b is here. And so you're going to be indifferent according to those expected utilities because all of your expected utilities will be the same. It will be b. So that won't work. Um, why does m less than zero not work? Well, take the same assumptions. You prefer x to y, so the expected utility of x is greater than the expected utility of y. Now, this transformation will only work if negative m, so this is just assuming that m is a positive number now, but we're going to make it a negative by sticking this negative sign to both sides. We'll see why we're going to do that. It's just going to make the next step a little bit uh, more intuitive. So we can, again, subtract b from both sides, but now we're going to be dividing a negative m from both sides of this inequality, and when you do that, whenever you divide a negative number from both sides of an inequality, you have to flip the inequality. So this goes from uh, that to the, uh, what is that? Expected utility of x is less than the expected utility of y. And I have a bunch of question marks there because, well, that's the opposite of what we assumed up here. We assumed that uh, x is preferred to y, so therefore the expected utility of x is greater than the expected utility of y. And we've ended up with something that's not the case down here. So essentially what's going on here is you flipped your preference. So now every time you preferred something, if you preferred x to y, now you prefer y to x with this transformation where m is a negative number. So essentially you, you can't do that because all you'll be doing is flipping your preferences for all of your outcomes. So that will actually do the exact opposite of preserving all of your preferences. So obviously you can't do that. A um, couple more things to mention uh, about the expected utility transformations. This form m times the expected utility of these outcomes plus b is the only transformation that works. So you can't do complicated things like squaring stuff um, or taking square roots or taking logs. None of those expected utility transformation work, uh, expected utility transformations work. It has to be a linear transformation of the form m times an expected utility plus b where m is a positive number. Now I'm not going to tell you uh, why that's the case. The proof for that part is a little bit more complicated. Just take my word for it you can only use that kind of expected utility transformation. Now, the other thing is you might be asking why we care. Well, transformations allow us to scale games in convenient ways. And while I won't discuss how we scale games in these convenient ways here um, in detail, Suffice it to say that it's really nice to be able to take your most preferred outcome and set that to an expected utility of 1, and your least preferred outcome and set that to an expected utility of 0, and it will make a lot of algebra in, our, in the future a lot easier for us to handle. So we'll actually see that not in this series of lectures, but in the next series of lectures when we start talking about more complicated matrix games. But for now, that wraps up this video.